Hello Summoners, and welcome to Phaeology 101, your introduction to the study of Fire Emblem Heroes. I am Deku, and I will be your Phaeologist for today. Skill Inheritance is one of the most important aspects of the game. It's how you bring out a unit's full potential, and make them stand out against the sea of other units. But one problem many new players have is that they just don't know what fodder is good and worth it, nor where they can get it. So, in this video, we'll cover the best fodder that you can find among the Heroic Grail and Divine Codes units. Heroic Grails are a form of currency used to purchase new copies of old Grand Hero Battle or Tempest Trial Reward units a few months after their debut. Grails are most often earned from Aether Raids and Forging Bonds events, so if you need more, those are the game modes where you need to focus. Each hero starts as being worth 100 Grails but increase in cost by 50 each time you buy another copy, to a maximum of 500 grails per copy. You can buy a maximum of 20 copies of a unit, so it's very limited, but it's also rare that someone needs that many copies, so you should be fine. A couple of things to keep in mind about grail units. First, they can be used as fodder, but they can also be used as actual units, since they arrive as fully formed units at the 4-star rarity, rather than as combat manuals. So you need to balance out whether or not you want to use and merge the unit against their skills before foddering them. Second, most Grail units have one line of inheritable skills that become fully inheritable at 4 stars, and another that becomes available at 5 stars. Since all Grail units start at 4 stars, and it takes 20,000 feathers to upgrade them to 5 stars, skills available at 4 stars are probably worth more than the alternative. I'll be sure to point out the units whose best fodder are found at 4 stars, as they are generally the cheaper investment. If you look at the screen now, you can see all the Grail units and the associated skills that our Phaeologist's descriptors have determined to be the most useful. These are the heroes with good fodder available right out of the gate at 4 stars. As I said before, these are very available skills that you should definitely make use of. There are also a few units in here who are notable for their weapons. Those are very situational, but separating out the good and bad inheritable weapons can be hard sometimes, so I wanted to make a mention of them. Out of all the units on this list, the one with the best total value is easily Ninja Hannah. She has one of the best axes in the game with Ninja Masakari, Wrath at 4 stars, and Life and Death, which, while not the most uncommon skill line in existence, is still great fodder. The one other unit I wanted to mention, this time to warn you about, is Masked Marth. She actually has no passive skills to speak of, just her weapon. There's absolutely nothing you can fodder her for. The only reason to ever buy a Masked Marth is if you intend on building her. I'm not saying that it's bad to build her, I'm just letting you know. The other easily accessible source of fodder comes from Divine Codes which are actually received from a lot of game modes, including Aether Raids, Colosseum game modes, Forging Bonds, Mjolnir Strike, and Limited Hero Battles. That said, while the currency is more available, Divine Codes units are more limited and more expensive than Heroic Grail units, though they are also worth a lot more skill-wise. Each set of Divine Codes units are separated into different paths based on the game they come from. Each path is made up of 5 units of increasing worth, you have to buy these units in the order they sit in their path. You can only buy each unit once. For example, let's look at Summer Levitain. Even though Mirror Impact is a good skill, I was waffling on whether or not to put her on this list due to the fact that she's really the only good fodder in her path, and she sits way at the end. If you want to buy her, you would need to pick up every other unit in the path first, which means that while she herself is only worth 2,000 codes, you really need to spend 6,000 to buy her, so just keep that additive cost in mind when considering going for a Divine Codes unit. Also, while with the Heroic Grails you were buying a full unit, with the Divine Codes you're only purchasing a combat manual, so you can't actually use them as units. Combat manuals are really only good for merges, skill inheritance, and sometimes quick feathers, though I would not suggest the latter for any of the units listed in this video. Also, all Divine Codes units come at 5 stars, so there's no need to worry about skills becoming available at 4 stars like we did with the Heroic Grail. There are, at the time of making this video, 
three types of Divine Codes available in the game. Divine Codes 1, Divine Codes 2, and the Limited Ephemera. Divine Codes 1 and 2 are very similar. Every year in March, IS releases a new set of paths for people to use their Divine Codes for. When they release the new batch, they stop giving out Divine Codes for the old paths. However, you can use Divine Codes for the new paths to buy units from the old paths, so they aren't out of reach. It just means that you can't save your Divine Codes that you have now to buy from the new paths in a few months. Here are all the Divine Codes from Part 1 that seem to be the most worth it, in our opinion. As you can see, the units who have the best fodder are usually found towards the end of their respective paths. Here are the best fodder units for Divine Codes Part 2. There are more of those because the units are newer, and as such, so is the fodder. As time goes on, some of these units will become less notable, and more paths will come to the game with even better fodder. So think about that as time goes on. There's one last thing worth mentioning regarding Divine Codes. The Limited Ephemera. Each month, a set of 7 units are available for the Ephemera. Five of them are units that you've seen around a lot, I imagine, as they are all available at 4 stars. Most of these aren't very notable, but it is worth mentioning that the Tempest Trials units are usually available in the Ephemeral Codes about 6 months after their release. So that's an extra way of getting a copy of a unit that you need. The others are all available in the regular pool, so in those cases, they're usually less worth the limited ephemeral codes. The last two units, however, are 5 star exclusive, and it's not uncommon to see special heroes not available in the normal pool among those two units. They are three times as expensive as the 4 star units, but I will almost always suggest saving up for these units rather than purchasing the 4 star ones. You can also buy these units in whatever order you want, unlike the normal paths. Keep in mind though that after a month, the units will no longer be available, and your extra ephemera will disappear as well, so be sure to use up as much as you can before they're no longer available. The number of these you get per month are generally inconsistent, but I'd wager to bet that most months an active player can get both of the 5 star units, though that's not always the case either. Just plan your purchases ahead of time. And with that, it's about time for this class to end. Hopefully the lecture was able to help you understand what to look for regarding your Divine Codes and Heroic Grail purchases. As usual, any questions can be directed into the comments or our Discord server, and we'll do our best to answer them. Thank you for watching, and be sure to schedule another appointment with your Phaeologist soon. Goodbye.